Hello, everybody. Good morning. Hey, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, John Laswell, is this your first time in? Yes. Yes, it is. Are well, you? welcome. Um, just so you know, well, it doesn't really matter for much. We do kind of keep track of people's attendance, and that's how you kind of get voting rights. If you're here for like the three out of the, three out of the last four meetings, or something like that. And voting rights are based upon company. So if you'd like to be associated with a company, just let me know the company name, and I'll add you to the uh, to the tracker under that company. Okay. Um, do we want to do that now? Yeah, sure. If it's a, it's a if it's a name that I'm going to misspell, then just type it into the chat. <laughs> okay. It's uh, B O X I E. Thank you. Yeah, that one I probably would have gone wrong. Google, I would get, but yeah, Oxy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Thank you and welcome. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. Yep. All right. Hey, Eric. Hi. And Ginger. Hello. Hello. It's so nice to be joined by everybody else considering for the last two weeks it's just been me. <laughs> <laughs> now did you did you do it out of just bad habit or were you like hoping that maybe we would have a call? <laughs> well the first one was habit. Second one was thought we'd have a call and I think Clemens was here and, and someone else and then um yeah, so it's well, just that, a lack of intelligence of reading the notes. <laughs> well, that's funny because I could have sworn Clemens was one of the ones who said he wanted to wait until the 14th. So I think he well, did. apparently he thought last time was the 14th. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Jesse, are you there? I am. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Lucas, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Hello, and Tommy. Yo. Tommy, did, whoa, there's my whoa, thank you. <laughs> and Thomas. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Oh, Mr. Clemens, hello. Yes, yes. We were just making fun of you. <laughs> of course. Of course. Doug was making fun of you. I was not. No, Ginger started it. I swear. It was all Ginger. Hi, <laughs> Doug. This is David. Oh, hey, David. Oh, you, oh, you were talking about last week? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, were, we were here while everybody else was not. Well, yeah, we're, we were talking around about how we could have sworn it was you that said you did not want to meet last week. So. That's well, maybe I changed my mind and, and, I, and I forgot it. There you go. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Anybody else I'm missing? I don't think so. I think I got everybody. All right. Hi, Daniel. Meow. <laughs> Hello. If I was still living in, in, in Seattle, I would have to have a, I would have a, Nice story to tell about not having power, maybe. But did Seattle use power? Lose, lose power? Yeah, the whole last uh, since yesterday morning, um, they had they have lots of power outages because they had they had a little wind and how it is. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, there were two hundred fifty thousand households without power. Well, hey. okay, got Remy, uh, Lucas, are you there? Yep, I'm here. All right, and I know someone has been flying by. Anish? Hey, Doug. Hello, and Christian. Christian, you there? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, there we go, gotcha. All right. Hi, Doug. You, you had me marked down twice, actually. Oh, wait, did I have... Oh, yeah, there was... Okay, I'm sorry. Maybe I... Okay, I was getting you mixed up with Chris. Maybe it was Christoph I was getting you mixed up. No? Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was Christoph. That was who I was getting you mixed up with. Happy New Year. Hello. And Lu Deng? Hey. Hey, Doc. Hello. All right. Am I missing anybody? Oh, H-O... I mean, sorry. H-A-O. Oh, hi. Oh, then that was Manuel. Okay, thank you. Yeah, hi. Uh, H-A-O, are you there? Ho? Yep, that's how. How? 
Okay. Well, have you been here before? I can't remember. I apologize. How? Uh, Hal has been here once, uh, and he's from Google. Google. That's what I. Yeah. You knew what I wanted to ask. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Just want to make sure I get everybody associated appropriately. Do, 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 do. All right, just one more minute, then we'll get started. Oh, where's Slinky? There's Slinky. I was going to say, it's going to be the Slinky show at first. So I want to make sure he's there. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. All right, tell you what, there we go, three after, let's go ahead and get started. Um, all right, so, I don't think there's anything worth mentioning there. Community time, anything from the community people wanna bring up? It's not on the agenda. All right, in that case, KubeCon EU, May 4th through the 7th, we get a 35 minute uh, speaker session or maintainer track session. Uh, so, as usual, we're looking for volunteers. If you are interested in speaking, please reach out to me. Um, <clears throat> you don't have to be an old timer. You can be new to the group. Um, anybody's welcome to do it. This is just, you know, provide an overview of what the specs are about or in our status, nothing too deep, but it is a good opportunity to get face time for the community if that's something you're interested in. Um, if not, we may have to go back to the regular folks who do that, but I'm sure they have no problem letting new, new folks do it if you guys want to. I would be very happy to yield to uh, someone who's uh, someone else is going to do it. There's enough video of me talking about it. I feel the same way. Yes. Um, so <laughs> please don't make us do this again. <laughs> um, but that, actually, on that, on that note, you know, if you are interested in doing it, we have lots of PowerPoint slide decks from previous talks. So a lot of it is just repeating the same thing we've already said. But <clears throat> you know, some people's companies actually really care about those kind of things from tracking and performance perspectives. Hey, here's your opportunity to get out there. So just reach out to me. Um, I think, Ginger, you tend to know this stuff. Do you remember what the deadline is for saying yes or no to this stuff? I know we have a little bit of time, right? Uh, maintainer stuff is uh, February 7th, I believe. Okay, there you go. So we got a couple of weeks. So I'll give it a week or two, but please reach out to me if you are interested. Okay, and I think we can have up to, I think for this kind of talk, Two speakers would be the maximum, uh, but one speaker is fine as well because it's only 35 minutes. Okay. Do you want a response now or do you want a, you want a separate email? Uh, either, you can do it to me in, in the chat if you want. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right, uh, SDK, I don't see, oh, there he is, Timur, you there. Um, I'm sorry, I yeah. got ahead of myself, it's not SDK, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so we have an SDK call this week, but last time I checked, we have nothing on the agenda. <laughs> So if you are interested in a topic, please add it. Um, discovery call will be next week. However, I would like to have a brief discussion. So if the SDK call has no agenda items, I would like to have a discovery interrupt call immediately following this one. So please stick around if you're interested in either one of those topics, mm -hmm. okay? Um, now, Timur, back to you. Anything you wanna mention relative to workflow? Hey, first of all, hi guys, happy new year. Uh, hi, Doug. Yeah, we had a lot of, uh, last week we were pretty busy. We, we are currently working on a number of things, probably moving from uh, using JQ as far as the expression language goes. Uh, we have also added reusability of expressions so they can be referenced by name uh, throughout the workflow. And we're looking at uh, bigger things like uh, dynamic condition evaluation and things like that. So there's a lot of movement going on starting this year. So I'm happy about that. And, and, and um, yeah, the community seems to be uh, growing a little. Thanks. Cool. Any questions for Klaus? Oh, not Klaus. <laughs> for Timur. All right, cool. <clears throat> um, all right, now into the real work. So Slinky asked um, for some things to be moved up to the top because he wants to leave early. So Slinky, query expression language. Uh, yeah, so uh, I would love to start here with um, uh, try to, to, uh, to write down a, a spec for the expression language, which is similar to what uh, Clem has proposed. And then uh, I will 
to bring it to the community and we can compare the, the two solutions we have in mind and, and go ahead with this. So I still didn't uh, do any work, honestly. So I hope next week I can show you something. Well, uh, we had a we had a lengthy debate last late last year when we talked about this last about um, this versus SQL, um, and you wanted to go and take a look at the um, uh, the SQL um, a message to like you said, JMS. Did you do that? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I I want to do that. I wanna I wanna I wanna check it out what you propose and try to write down something and. Okay. Good. Yeah, that, that's what I want to do. Okay. Great. I and just want to, want to make sure we're on the same page. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm excited about the possible convergence here. So this should be good. All right. Any other questions or comments for Slinky on the expression language stuff? All right. Summer of code. Slinky? Uh, well, what I have to say here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, is there any update from your side? Because I think, I think you were going to look into. Some, I apologize. Like, I don't know what we talked about there. I know. I re, I, rec I recall you told me that you were going to look into that. Well, I did look into some of code because right? I asked about. I'm saying, I'm trying to boy, I'm paging all this back in. And so, Google, uh, not Google. Clements had some concern about the, for lack of a better phrase, the IP or or rules or whatever you want to call it around Google Summer of Code. Um, and so I did reach out to the CNCF and um, they said, it's okay if you do it, but they understand the concern that Clemens had. <clears throat> and so they pointed me to this community bridge thingy as an alternative, which I think was more open for lack of a better phrase. Um, but I think that's as far as my investigation went. And I thought we had a brief discussion back around the Google Summer of Code thing, but I can't remember what that was to be perfectly honest. Um, so let me ask you something different, uh, Slinky. <clears throat> if we did something here at all, do you actually have a particular project in mind? Because I think that might be the first step because if we don't even have a project in mind, then we shouldn't do either one of them, right? Well, I had a bunch of ideas for SDKs. I wrote somewhere, but one idea was, I wrote it somewhere, right? Uh, in a previous, oh, okay. was it this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a compromise testing is one. The other, uh, thinking about new SDKs for languages that we don't support that we should. Okay. Would it make sense then for you to look at the community bridge stuff to see if that would satisfy your needs? Because if if Google Summer Code has some potential legalistic issues or just issues in general that, that, that bother at least some of the members of our community, but community bridge doesn't, but they get the same net result, maybe we should look at community bridge. I can try to. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Anybody else have any questions or comments on that particular topic? All right, cool. In that case, let's talk about this PR. <laughs> You're up again, Slinky. Francesco? Yeah, no, I was waiting for people to read it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You want to quickly kind of summarize? Well, it's simply stated, uh, I propose to remove the distributed tracing extension. Yeah, it turns out I have a, I, have, I just talked to someone uh, last week um, who's, who, who's referring to that distributed tracing extension and using it, uses it exactly in the way how we thought, thought of it, and that is end to end. So they're not using the transport level thing, but they're using this one. Well, 
as, as I write down at the end of the comment, if you don't want, if you don't want to remove this, I'm fine. But yeah, just just let's make sure people understand this because uh, so much times I, I got these questions, uh, uh, but in Slack, uh, in our communities, in this in this DK. So I mean, uh, at least let's give it a name that um, uh, makes clear what. what uh, what's the goal of that extension? But it's literally that same functionality. You don't have to give it a different name. But it's end to end. It is lit. It is it is intentionally blind to all the transport level stuff. And you have an you have an application A which is issuing an event and it has a it has a context. And then there is some black box infrastructure of of arbitrary complexity which goes in pops out an event to a receiver and they then go and keep going um, with uh, that tracing information at their level. And, and neither party cares about the internals of that, uh, of that infrastructure that's carrying that event. The W3C tracing information is literally only for one transport path. It's literally just for, for getting that event from the publisher stored into a store and then it vanishes. That's all what this is. But functionally, it's the same thing, but it's just end to end. But I, I, have, to, I have to trust that, that um, uh, 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 folks can deal with separate level of, levels of abstraction. But if they can't, then I find it weird to go and take it away, take a feature away from people who can. So okay, just just uh, go, go ahead, Slinky. No, I don't know what's making. I I I was saying. Um, oh, I was sorry. I, I've completely lost where the raise hand function. Yeah, I was going to comment. Where? Okay, it's in the reaction thing apparently, but I'm trying to find the reaction thing at least on my screen. Where oh, is... it's on the bottom. Yeah. Okay, it's moved. I can see it now. Um, let me do this. Okay. <laughs> the bottom of um, what? <laughs> I, I think it's part of the problem here that it's just using the same attribute names. So, so people are sort of making the mental connection that it's exactly the same thing. I think um, that's the issue here. Yeah. yeah. The issue is the name and the name of the, of the attributes. Right. People just it, don't, I mean, it get, gets confused from that. It yeah. It's the same thing. It is. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I know not, I'm, I would prefer it to stay, to be honest, because um, the problem you're going to get into is, um, well, how does this work for MQP? How does it work for all these other sort of transports where the W3C standard doesn't, you know, isn't there? Yeah. Well, well, but but I, I stop you right now because the, uh, we talked about that uh, months ago that we shouldn't overlap with what other uh, stand, uh, standard organizations are doing for. Uh, developing tracing tools on each protocol. So we, we don't want to create an obstruction on that. that we, we talked a lot of times about that, so. Right, no, no, and I get that. But so the question becomes, why not leave it in then? Because now you've sort of formalized from a cloud event perspective, how this thing is, you know, can work across all those different transports. Well, well I guess my point is what, what do you gain by removing it? Well, we definitely gain that people doesn't get confused and don't no. uh, and don't de develop bad implementations of that uh, distributed tracing extension, which I think it's it's a problem if people start developing bad implementations. But it's the same concept. If you if you if you roll your suitcase in a in a dry, in a moving train, uh, yes, you move forward, and both of you move forward but the moving is completely independent of each other. So uh, it's the same concept. The, we are here, we are moving, we, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an underlying transport infrastructure, which we don't understand how that works and uh, we, we, can't, we, we don't influence it, but we wanna make sure that the functionality that is, that is realized on top of it works independent of it. But that is relying itself on the same kind of tracing infrastructure. So the concepts and the frameworks and everything is the same. 
So, I mean, if you rename those things, how do you then say, oh, this ties into tracing? Because ultimately we want this to end up in the same, in the same kind of infrastructure. We want this to be integrated in the same infrastructure. It's just end to end. Maybe, maybe I'm for uh, either this is too complicated or too simple for me. So, we, <clears throat> so if, if the biggest concern here is around possible confusion, um, well, no, wait, oh, never mind. I was going to say, so Slinky, are there, are there particular areas that you think are more confusing or that, that, that are really are that are really tripping people up and maybe we can just focus on those particular things and see if we can address those instead of instead of just saying, oh, we're gonna to try to kill the entire spec. Well, all people that came to me just told me, hey, this is like a W2C trace context. Yeah. I mean, should I, should I use it? Should I use it? Should I use this or should I use uh, WCT, uh, W2C trace context? Yeah, the, an the answer is both. Well, it's not an or. That, that's that's not the answer because why should I send both? I mean, I, I, that, that it's makes very complex. easy. It's it's very easy because you're doing an HTTP request to a broker or to an endpoint, and you do an you you you're tracing that HTTP request. When the HTTP request is done, that whole trace history is is over, but that event is then stored in wherever the HTTP request went to, and then you're starting another HTTP request from the other side. To come and fetch that to fe to fetch that message, that is another HTTP request which has nothing to do with the prior one, right? And is and is initiated by the client by another client, and that's where that starts. But then you have an event that has been published by someone, right? And you have the event that has been received by someone else, and there's a relationship between those two, which is not represented by either the 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 request that put, that stored the event nor the request that retrieved the event. They have a completely different relationship with each other. And that is um, the customer has a new shipping address, right? That is the event. And that was caused by some business activity. And now I continue that business activity with, I'm gonna send that, that customer uh, a piece of mail. That's the stuff that happens at that level of, of the app, on the application level. And that activity, which is you know, cause and effect, that requires tracing that has nothing to do with those two HTTP requests, nothing. So yes, it is exactly the same mechanism, but at a li different level of, level, of, level of abstraction. That's why I'm saying both. You're starting with the same, you're, you might be starting with the same context in the case where you're publishing a message, but one is just purely for the act of storing the, the, the event in the, HTTP, in, in, in the eventing infrastructure and the other one is for end to end. So we're talking about two completely different levels in the application. This is for the end-to-end -end story. So I want to say something here. I'm wondering whether it's just a matter of adding additional text to explain yes. how to use this. So I mean, we can we can enrich this with with uh, a, a clarification along the lines of of what I just said. It seems like this paragraph comes awfully close to what you were talking about, right? Yeah, that's that's yes. So so Slinky, is there anything that you can think of that we could do to make this less confusing? I mean, maybe for me, examples the and changing the the changing the keys of the extension. I mean, yeah. that, for me, that's that's what will really make that clear that we are not talking about. Even if it's yes, it's tracing, but we are not talking about W three C trace trace count. But but thank you. Think we're talking about exactly the same mechanism. The W three C tracing mechanism is an extensible one, which also has multiple protocol bindings. Okay, and, so then, so then, what what do we say to? Uh, that's my point. I mean, yeah, yeah. When somebody that has a knowledge of W three C trace context comes to uh, the cloud event spec and look at this, say, what do I do now? So well, it says that. 
it's not intended to replace the pro protocol specific headers for tracing like the ones in the trace context. Coming from a point of clarification, when you say it's the same mechanism, do you mean it's the same con con conceptual mechanism or that it is actually it is actually the distributed tracing? It, it is. is actually the W3C tracing stuff, just we're just doing it at another level. Yeah, we're just doing it at the level above it. Okay, so it's not just the same concept. It is literally the same thing, just we're doing it's it twice. It's literally the same thing. A cloud events is, a, is an abstraction that rides on top of multiple transports, and we have explicitly designed it in multiple places so that it's routable, so that you can go and do a multi-hop route from a device through a gateway to a cloud to a cloud gateway through a router, router to a router to a destination, which is whatever, I just said six different hops. And we've done the transcoding work and we've done all of that stuff, right? And it should be possible once that event arrives at a, at a, at a subscriber which wants it, that that subscriber then can go and create a, um, uh, a tracing footprint, which originates at the device, but doesn't, but, but doesn't have all the weird intermediary um, routing steps, which are to be a black box for most applications um, 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 in there. But it's just an end-to-end. -end. It's just, you just look at it from the app perspective. You just go and, 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 and tune out all the plumbing that's underneath it. And you only look at the app. I mean, we're ultimately, we're, we're, let me take one step further back, right? We are the serverless working group. We should be interested in an abstraction, which is really ignoring all the weird goop that sits under the covers and uh, is, is uh, um, taking care of getting the event from A to B and provide something that then provides a pure perspective um, of uh, for, uh, for the on the application level, and don't thinks about uh, doesn't think about the servers and how many hops the message had to had to go through. So that's that's the goal of it. If we can go and improve that text, I'm all for it. So, what are your thoughts, Slinky? Well, go ahead and improve the text. Next time I'll get uh, I'll get questions about this. I'll I'll tell go ask Clement. <laughs> So because I I agree with you. I understand uh, the user case, and I'm completely okay with that. But the fact that it creates confusion is still there. Okay. So I, I, I'm okay with all all you said. I mean, I'm I'm not saying that this this doesn't make sense or or whatever. I'm just uh, saying that this creates a lot of confusion, and I saw. I agree, uh, I agree. But, but I, I think... saw implementations where this was implemented wrongly. Yeah, but I, I just think I just think uh, putting a bullet, bullet in the neck of the feature is not the right way to deal with it. So, so let's, let's uh, um, I'll, take, I'll take the homework to go and write some, some uh, three, three extra paragraphs in that spec to hopefully um, improve this and then you'll, you'll be the reviewer. Thank you, Clemens. Now, I, <clears throat> uh, Francesco, I know it might be hard, but if you happen to have Slack messages, emails, but the exact text of the questions that people asked you, that might help Clemens come up with some text to, to try to preemptively answer those questions before people ask you again. Correct. Sure, so I, can, you, I can try to find some of them. Yeah, because okay. obviously if, if they just if they just voice their concerns to you, you may not remember the exact wording, but if you have you know, emails and stuff like that, <clears throat> if you can pass those along to Clemens, I think that might help him. Yeah, we also have some issues in, in, the, in different SDKs, uh, like one in SDK JavaScript recently. Yeah, that'd be great. If you just paste the URL to those things inside this issue or inside this PR so that Clemens can have those and use those as reference, that'd be great. Okay. Anything else then? on this particular topic that people want to bring up. Oops, I forgot. Oops, all right, cool. Thank you, Slinky. All right, um, just in case we run out of time, these next, these three PRs, I believe are technically waiting on updates from people. Um, so I think this is Lance, I think this is Clemens, I think, I can't remember who this one is, but 
if you if you want any of these three, please work on those updates because yeah. I think they're at least outstanding comments, if not if not just action items to do something. Yeah, yeah my, my my time freed up, so now I'll, I'll be able to go and deal with them. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, okay, what I wanted to do was talk about this PR. I now this one. Actually, hold on. I think I already have it here. This PR um, was opened up as a result of this issue where there was some confusion between subscription config and protocol settings. And I opened up this PR to try to address that. And <clears throat> I'm not going to try to do a vote or anything on here um, because I want people to take time to read it. But what I did do is a couple of things. And I apologize if my thought process here isn't linear. It's going to bounce around a little. But what I did in the PR was talked about how there are three conceptual phases that a subscription manager goes through. I actually back up, sorry. As I said, there was, a, there was confusion around subscription config and protocol settings in the subscription API spec. So that's the spec we're talking about, subscription API. What I did is I, I said, there are basically three conceptual phases and I purposely used the word conceptual because how you choose to implement this is, is up to you. But I thought there was three phases. One was the event generation phase. Okay. Then there was the event filtering phase, and then there was transmitting the event to the sync. As I said, obviously you could choose to do all three in one. You could choose, you know, however you want to code this up is up to you. But I think as you're coming up with these various options between config, filters, and protocol settings, I think most people, I think anyway, have these three phases sort of in mind. And that's why we had three different configuration settings. Okay, and so what I try to do is talk about those three phases and says, oh, and by the way, if you want to modify something that goes on in this phase, here's the property to use to modify that particular phase. Now, at the end though, I talk about how it's possible that one particular flag actually influences more than one of those phases. And that's okay. It's, it's as I said, it's an implementation detail, but the key thing is that inside the service description, it needs to be very clear I'm sorry, when someone reads the service description, it needs to be very clear which particular flag influences which part of the event processing. So for example, if I define a configuration option that influences say filtering and event transmission, the definition of that configuration option needs to explicitly state that to someone so they know which flag to use when, regardless of which particular bucket that these things go into. Because I'll be honest with you, <clears throat> as I was thinking about this issue over the Christmas break, part of me jumped to, well, is this really that different from our extensions thing where we, everybody kept saying, well, we need to have buckets for extensions, right? And possibly different buckets for different things. And at one point my mind jumped to, well, let's get rid of all these three things, right? And just have the idea of just add your random quote extension to define your own flag and you tell us what that means. But then I realized that we need some consistency. So for example, we don't want everybody to find their own filtering thing, right? We want to be able to have an extensibility point through dialects and stuff like that, right? Because, but the base filtering concept needs to be well-defined. So that's, that, that, that's why I ended up saying, okay, we can't kill off the idea of the buckets, but we do need to be very clear in terms of how they're going to be used as people use them or define them in their service subscription, or I'm sorry, yeah, service, dis uh, service description. Okay, so take, take the time, read this, see if it's on the right path. I'll take any wording changes people wanna make, even the idea of killing the three conceptual phases, maybe that's wrong, I don't know. But take your time and look through it and see what you guys think. Um, I'm but, excited, I think this is great. Okay, yeah, I was gonna ask, at least right now, let me know if you guys, off the top of your head, think it's headed in the wrong direction or not. No, I think, I think you captured it as right. Okay. So. Take your time, read through it, let me know. Um, now, the other thing though related to that, oh, I guess let me pause there. Any other questions or comments before I move on to a slightly related topic? Okay, cool, thank you. Please take your time to read that. Now, and keep in mind, it is this is a change for the subscription API spec, but I actually think this may be better suited for a primer if we ever do create one. Um, I, think it's, I think it's not quite specy enough, but um, that's a separate discussion. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about related to this is <clears throat> as I was working through this entire thought process around this, I decided to walk through a very concrete set of examples just to sort of get my mind around this. And what I wanted to do was to focus on GitHub because I thought GitHub presented some interesting 
uh, challenges for us. Um, okay, so first of all, the scenario here is a user wants to subscribe to the, cre the issue created um, event as well as the repo push event. Okay, now I phrase these in terms of the types that we defined in our GitHub adapter. Obviously, these are not the strings that GitHub itself knows about, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but this is the general scenario that I sort of walk through. Okay, now if I was to create a GitHub subscription manager today, what I would probably do is make it so that the subscription looks something like this. Okay, so following our spec, we're going to talk about HTTP. You need to specify a secret so that your so that the sync can verify that this thing's actually coming from GitHub as opposed to some random endpoint on the web. You can specify the sync, and then you specify some options. In particular, the owner, the repo, and then the events that you want. Okay. Now, I tried to write this up with as few changes to GitHub processing as possible, meaning I just wanted to write a very thin sort of veneer on top of what GitHub does today, which is why I did not use filters because they don't have the idea of filters, at least they don't talk about them as filters, right? They talk about just, oh, what events do you want to see? And I'll talk about later about how we actually could use filters to do that. But keeping this to the minimal, I decided to skip filters and just put this all in config. Okay, and it and GitHub expresses these things as three separate entities: owner, repo, and then list of events. So this is would be my first pass as trying to write a subscription manager for GitHub. Okay, and now this presented some interesting aspects. First, filters don't mean anything, in my opinion, to GitHub. Okay, now it, it is possible that they implemented the idea of which events you want to see as filters, but I decided to say nope, they didn't. And they chose to, to do it the exact same way as they're doing owner and repo and have a little more of a hard coded nature to it. Because I think it's perfectly allowable for someone to actually code up their sub subscription manager that way. Okay. So my the first thing I came to in this was filters needs to be optional for a subscription manager to support. I have I have one one yep. so here's here's a question that I have mm -hmm. related to what you just said. Is where's the source? Because the 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 notion that we have in with source is that's the thing that raises the event which means that implicitly also means that that source has a subscription manager and that's the thing you talk to yep. and and then within that source you then further qualify the thing that you want the things that you want and you would go and filter on them so there is a because we have we have two two mechanisms here in in cloud events that kind of compose with the the subscription model. We have we have the source that you can go and subscribe on. Um, and my assumption is that that discovery will effectively enumerate all the services slash sources um, that you can go and subscribe on, and then we'll give you the subscription address effectively for each of these sources, which can yield events. And then within those sources, there's a substructure. So you could say that for, um, um, for GitHub, the top level is um, the source is a GitHub cloud event spec. That is the thing you're interested in. You're interested in events about that repo. And then that repo starts um, giving you events of, of all the kinds of things that may happen in that set of repo. A new issue is being created. Uh, a new pull request is being created, et cetera. And then with a filter, you can then go and further constrain what exactly is it that you want. That's how, that's how I think about the relationship. And then then effectively the, the, the what is that event is then expressed in the event type as well as in the subject so that you can, that you can uh, distinguish between, um, so you would have, a, if, if a new issue is being created, you would have, have an event type new issue. And then you have a subject which, which points to issues slash issue number um, and that is then relative to um, the um, the root URI, which is the source, because you're missing you're missing our our cloud events concepts of source and subject here. Right, and I'll, I'll get I, I see you 
Klaus on any issue, but let me, let me try to <clears throat> not necessarily answer everything you said there, but rather one of the things that became clear to me as I was walking through this exercise was how much of an implementation choice do we want to force on people, right? Because this very first example, as I said, I tried to keep the changes to GitHub as minimal as possible. Because at some point in the future, I'm hoping we, we approach GitHub and say, hey, you want to support a subscription API? And they may say, sure, what do we need to do? And I want to be able to say almost nothing, right? But the minute you start talking about, well, your subscription manager really should have been tied to the source, which I think you may have been implying somewhere in there, right? That's, that's a different model already than what they have, right? Because they well, have a single endpoint that accepts a subscription today. The interesting thing is when, once you do that with GitHub, you might be talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, maybe, but, 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 but you get my point, right? right? Yeah. Because do we want to force someone to say, no, you have to have a subscription manager per source, or can you have a generic um, endpoint that, that handles everything? And then at that point, do you make, does source have to be, quote, a filter or could it be a config option, right? And my mind immediately jumped to, well, we want the spec to be as widely adopted as possible. So therefore, we should allow for all these variants, and that's why I came down to this result, this possible issue of should subscription manager be forced to support filters or not? Yeah, I, I, I think there's a, there's a, the, the question here is, what is the subscription manager scope to? Because my belief is that the subscription manager is managing subscriptions for a source. So there is not one subscription manager per system but there are, a system might have tens of thousands of them, conceptually, right? Virtually, you may have one implementation, but really you can, you can subscribe, you can walk up to an object, you can walk up to a resource in, in, um, on a site and can ask the resource to subscribe. So I'm really thinking of, of that, if you, if you think about this in HTTP terms, I'm really thinking about this in a very extremely Rastafarian way in um, where literally a, a, you have a discovery overlay over your resource graph, which tells you in this graph, there is these and these and these objects can raise these and these and these um, uh, events. And then you just walk up to those objects and say, I wanna go and subscribe, here's some parameters. And that's what your sources are. And then your, your owner and repo parameters are already implied because you're already talking to that thing. Yep, I get that. I, I, I completely understand that model. I'm just, my mind just isn't there yet that says that has to be the model, as opposed to a single subscription manager that supports multiple sources. That, that's, that's where I'm struggling with all this. But let, let's go to the queue since people have their hands up. Klaus, I think you were first. Yeah, so just some thought that came to my mind when, when looking at this, it's quite interesting. Um, it reminded me a bit of, uh, we, we added this, I think it's called source template or pattern um, to the uh, discovery spec. And then we had those parameter values uh, that could be added. And uh, I think for this example, they would exactly correspond to those uh, config values you have here. So you would have then a source pattern uh, like github.com and then uh, slash um, owner in curly braces and slash um, repo and curly braces. So you, you could even describe those config values in the discovery data with this. Hold on a minute, I was trying to find the link. Let's see what we have in here. Where was that, do you remember? I'm sure it's in all the examples. Um, this is in the specification of the <laughs> source, I think, but. It, it was the discovery spec or the subscription spec? The discovery spec. Okay, so where was that? It was uh, um, similar to what you have um, for, ah, oh, there it is, there source it is. template. Okay. It is. It. Right, but, but what's interesting is, I agree with you that when you're specifying the source, this kind of thing would be very useful, but I, I'm not sure that necessarily answers the question of the scope of the subscription manager itself. Yeah, may, maybe, but it's kind of describing how those config values uh, relate to the source attribute. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I would agree with that. I, it's not, I, I haven't thought it through. It was just an observation I wanted to make. Yeah. So. No, it, it is a good point. I could, yeah, and thank you for mentioning it because I actually completely forgot about this. I'm not sure how that fits into it, but I'm sure it does somehow. But it, yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, source, and, so, but, but, but Doug, source needs to show up in your world and it doesn't. Well, are you, it sounds like maybe you're saying, well, are you saying source problem. needs to be the, are you saying source needs to be the destination for the post or source needs to either, show up in here or one of both? So oh, uh, one, um, uh, either or, uh, and I don't, um, and I don't think we, I think both, I think both are possible. There is this, so what I just explained was the, the, I already said that that's a very Rastafarian view um, is, um, everything can have a resource, it can have a subscription manager. Of course, you can also have the simpler view of having a single endpoint for subscription management, but then you would, then you need to go and pass the source as a parameter. What's, what's, what's a little, what's a little strange for a generic mechanism here, Doug, is that you have um, <coughs> in your, in your config, you have concepts that are um, specific to uh, the target service, right? Owner and repo and events. Mm -hmm. You, you basically have to know those, and we have we we have abstractions for those in the form of source and subject. True. And so that's and and event types. So the so so the the event the event type um, that's represented by events, and I think the owner and the repo is really with the source you want to go and and and, um, uh, and talk to. So whether the source is indicated in that in the the subscription message. Or whether it's implied by the address that you're talking to, is something that we can make such that both are options you can use. Right, and to be honest, I always thought that if source was going to be part of this, it actually would show up as a filter because you may want to do a subscription across sources. Um, I don't think you can. But isn't that an implementation choice? Um, Right, because you may say the source may be, say, a GitHub issue, but you're subscribing to the repo. Yeah, but then right? you're subscribing to the repo. With GitHub, it's actually a very simple example because it's a strict hierarchy. You could subscribe to GitHub and then get everything that's related to everything in GitHub and just filter it down. Or you can go and subscribe to a repo and then you get everything that's related to the repo and filter only that down. Or you could go and subscribe to everything that's in, that happens to a particular file, and then and then you might go and filter um, uh, just some subset of, of those those events down. Oh yeah, okay. So I'm sorry, my mind jumped to oh, if you specify source somewhere in here, you're only going to get events for that source. But I forgot you can get events for in essence subsources. So yeah. Okay, ne never mind. Okay, let's let, let's go back to the queue, uh, Anish. I don't know where to start. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so filters, I thought filters was always a section where we specify a cloud event attribute in, in, in matter to receive the events or to filter the events uh, for the consumer, right? So if you want to filter what a subscriber needs, it's usually based on a cloud event attribute, right? And Coming yes. to the, the questions of GitHub, like for example, now GitHub is just not github.com. There are thousands of enterprise GitHubs. So if we don't mention a filter criteria based on source, I, I see that as a problem because filter was always like, I don't know uh, whether that's still in the case of, for example, Knative. Knative introduces source as a filter type, as a filter criteria. So are we completely going to ignore that now? So my, my perspective was, I think source should be a valid thing you can filter on, okay? So I do, I do agree with you on that, on that point. However, as I was walking through this, I realized that there may be things that people need to filter on that don't necessarily show up in the message. And therefore, I'm thinking we need to support the idea of filtering on those non-cloud event attributes or non-event attributes. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it's 100% related to what you're saying, but you maybe you reminded me of that particular realization I had as I was going through the analysis. Okay, and, and also the config thing is is also a bit uh, confusing because config can not only be in in terms of uh, the event delivery; it can also be, let's say, uh, introducing properties in order to uh, in order to communicate with the sync. So, what if the sync was uh, protected by some sort of client credentials. 
Mm -hmm. And you want to also, so config becomes this huge uh, generic envelope where you want to just stuff everything or what. So I, I'm also kind of doubtful on the term config over here again. Well, that's, that's kind of why down here I talked about how on, on the previous PR, how any yeah, one of yeah. these could influence many different things or, or everything, right? <laughs> Um, but, and, and that's when I was starting to struggle because as I, if I'm implementing this thing, I don't necessarily want this specification to force me to change my implementation, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, okay, um, Hamid, you're next. Yes, so I wanna go back to the allowed values for source and where we wanna put it. One question I have is that are we, for example, uh, supporting expressions for source as well. And this is something we were discussing earlier. What if the subscriber is interested in receiving, you know, some patterns of source when subscribing? Say for example, I don't know, all the files in a GitHub repo that have this specific extension name. Where would yeah. we do that if we if we use source as, as part of the endpoint or you know make some other assumptions around that? So correct me if I'm wrong here, but Clemens, I think when you start talking about if if the if this post was sent to the source, mm -hmm. that we would still allow them to specify a source as the filter, and at that point you can do wildcards or whatever kind of filter expression we have, right? Yeah, I mean you would. So we have a. Um, so think about. Um, let's say you you subscribe to the GitHub repo, and uh, so that's your source. So you walk up. Do you walk up to the GitHub repo? Go to its subscription endpoint. So let's say under github.com slash um, uh, slash cloud event slash spec, there is a slash dollar subscription uh, endpoint that you can talk uh, that you can talk to. And um, then you would walk to walk up to that and you would scroll and subscribe. And now you go and specify a filter and the filter is a prefix filter on subject um, slash uh, main slash tree no sorry slash tree slash main I don't know I don't know exactly you forget um, slash whatever file and um, so you specify a, specify a file path and then events are giving raised but only the ones that are that are related to a particular file prefix would then be would then be um, um, uh, given to you and that filter would be on the subject property. Um, with that. Yeah, but what if what if they are part of the source? I mean, that's that's something we were discussing earlier, right? We can have subsources, and what if you know it's the same, this structure it's is like that? The same thing. If you um, you can still use source as a as a property there, but if you are subscribing on if you are subscribing on a particular scope, only subscopes can be can be there, but you can absolutely go in and do a prefix filter on on a, on a subsource if if that's if that's what's being given. But my assumption is for event delivery um, and, and for the subscription mechanism in general, when you are when you are going to a source and you're subscribing to events that are happening from that source, it's also the source that is raising those. It is just to understand your, uh, your thinking better. So it means, for example, for me to, uh, for, for the customer to subscribe to the, you know, uh, most common ancestor, for example, and then mm -hmm. further uh, filter uh, for all those subsources. Is that what you're saying? The, 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 the split we have in the structure is, in the metadata structure, is we have source and subject. And think of that as source is the scoping for where you subscribe, and then subject is the path to the object about about which it, the the path to the object within that scope to which the event actually applies. So so the way how we do this in so very without without going into hypotheticals, concrete example of how we do this in in Azure, uh, in Event Grid, is. Um, if you're subscribing to the Blob Store for events when Blobs are being created, you're subscribing on a on a storage container. Right? Containers are our directories where you can go and store Blobs. That's where you that's where you subscribe. That's your that's your scope, and 
effectively that's also the subscription manager you, you talk to. And then that thing is raising events where it gives this, the, the container as its, its scope, as its source. And then it gives you the, the, path, the, the path to that file as the subject. And then you can do a prefix filter or you can do a suffix filter or you can do both. So you can go and do on the subject, you can go and do a suffix filter for let's say .jpg and then you can only get events uh, raised if uh, a JPEG file has been created somewhere in that path. Um, or you can also, or and you can also create a prefix filter where you say, I'm only interested in files which are coming from this particular subdirectory. But the scope is always the container and then you, with the subject, which composes with that container name, you then get to select which of the events scope to which sub object inside of that container um, you're getting events for. And that's, that's a model that's working for um, a ton of different scenarios from, um, you know, the blob store is the simplest one and then um, keeps working for, you know, all kinds of other things like the resource events that are being raised um, and for, you know, all the other tech, tech, uh, technical things in Azure. And then we have a bunch of ISVs which are also doing that for business objects. We're subscribing on a particular item inside of a, an application, like a customer in a CRM system. And then you're getting these events raised for various aspects of that customer. And they, you can go and filter them by their hierarchical structure with a, with a prefix filter. Okay, I'm gonna have to, we have three other hands up uh, or two other hands up. And we're running low on time. Obviously, this this conversation is not going to end today. But I want to at least get to the people who have their hands up. So, Hamid, are you are you done, or do you have more things you want to raise? Uh, that's fine. Let's let's move on. Uh, okay. We will continue the conversation. We, yeah, so. yeah, this yeah. this is not going to end anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, Scott, you're up next. Hey, howdy. I, so I I think the conversation is kind of working that way, but I just want to make sure that we're thinking about the so just in the way that you can propagate up or down, depending on how you look at the architecture, uh, all of the discovery API pieces, that we can do the same thing for subscriptions. So I intended this in my usage to be the uh, a bunch of forwarding events. So middlewares can forward uh, or uh, aggregate up subscriptions to the correct endpoints as they get more and more specific to the producer. So is that being considered when people are talking about this? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you. Can you give a, can you give a more concrete example of what you're working? So, like, I want to subscribe to say GitHub events. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to subscribe to GitHub though. I'm going to subscribe to the the provider that I interact with to get me those events. I, Which, I, so, so, to me, I want to I want to be able to support both. I want to be able to support them talking to. I think you're talking about say Knata's infrastructure versus talking directly to GitHub. I want to be yeah, able to support yeah. both scenarios. That's that's right. So, um, this this idea that there is a tiered infrastructure, right? I'm not actually talking to GitHub. I'm talking to some intermediate like Knative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that's that's. I think that's where we were in the middle of the the conversation was like. It should be able. It should be possible to 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 have the subscription manager to be outside and inside. Yep. I would agree. Okay, uh, Remy, I think your hands up. Uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty aligned with what Scott said. Like my goal uh, as a manager, like the full IT of the company, is basically to have those kind of um, tier, like middle tier, where. I connect all the external service to mine, and then I will give access to a subscription API to my internal, like my employees. And with some restriction and permission that is managed directly on that uh, subscription API. And I think that's the difficulty that you were raising, uh, Doug. I think we should try to not enforce too many things because uh, otherwise it's gonna be hard to apply to all the different use case. So, yeah. So I guess this might have a question back for you, Remy, and I think actually, Scott, this may be for you as well. In the cases where your subscription manager is a piece of middleware or it's outside of the event producer itself, I, I would imagine in those scenarios, you don't have the notion of one subscription manager per source. It may be 
one subscription manager actually handles not just multiple sources, but potentially multiple event producers as well. Yeah, okay. that, right? That's my thinking because um, like, let's say GitHub. So I manage GitHub. I'm like the top of the enterprise of GitHub. So I get all the events from all our repo, but then I want to dispatch it and filter it for each team inside the company. So we are not like, we are a small company, like we are 200 people. So compared to the size of the other gentlemen, it's really small. <clears throat> but um, it, when you do that, uh, that means I have keys to get all the events from GitHub, but I don't want people to have access to those keys or to be able to get those. So they won't be able to subscribe the same way I will be able to subscribe by managing the company. Right, and, and what's, what's interesting to me about that scenario is how does the person doing the subscription tell you as this piece of middleware which event producer or which source they want the events from because that information may not necessarily show up in the event itself. So to, ask, to say, oh, well, that becomes a filter, right? It may not yep. necessarily be the right answer. And, and the shape of that subscribe may look very different when you're talking to your piece of middleware than it would be if you're talking directly to the event producer. Correct. Right. Like typically internally, I can push for like a certificate authentication while uh, I'm connected to GitHub using their uh, token systems usually. So I can have a break of authentication and security between my middleware where it's connected to and what he provides to my internal customers. So that's that was my goal. Uh, I think I tried to explain in the past probably badly. I still have to write a, a better document about that. But that, that's my overall thinking and why I joined this group. Uh, sometimes I get lost. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, so as I said, me, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, for me, the, the as you aggregate that uh, subscription up the chain to the more and more specific producer, the thinking was uh, filters kind of roll off. So the, uh, the broker would, uh, you would filter on a specific source and then as that aggregates up the chain, uh, the when you delegate to the next layer, you might remove some of the filters because they don't really apply anymore. Right, but see, and God, we're almost out of time. This is a great conversation though. But the, you know, conceptually, Scott, I would agree with you. But the problem that I run into is, okay, fine. If that's true, when you if we actually do support some like an SQL query thing, right? I can imagine the, this query also including a subject. Right, as part of the and condition or part of the part of the condition, right? And what you just said is like, okay, that means someone needs to analyze this SQL query and remove the subject or remove the equivalent of the event producer from this condition before he passes it up the chain. And removing that from this SQL query can be very complicated without without ensuring that you don't lose the desired semantics. And that's when I start thinking, oh my gosh, we're, we're overcomplicating this thing. Yeah, when did SQL get added? Well, was... <laughs> this was all part of the previous discussions. Anyway, we're technically out of time. Obviously, as I said, this conversation is going to keep going. But this this doc is linked in in this issue, 724, seven, down here, with some of my thoughts of things I, th I wanted to discuss with people before I went through the, the pain of opening up a PR that may not be valid. But I do want to continue the discussion in future calls. So please, when you get a chance, look at this doc add comments to it and stuff like that. Because I think the answering some of these questions as I was walking through this, I think is gonna help us clarify the way the spec should be written. Because I think there are a lot of things we haven't even thought about yet. Okay. All right, technical over time, I apologize. Um, Brian, are you there? Hey Doug, sorry I was hey, late. Okay, yep, did I, get, did I miss anybody for attendee? I got, I think, I think I got everybody. Just here's the quick list. Okay. Um, in that case, thank you all for joining. If you are interested in the SDK or the discovery interop, please stick on the call. I know Scott, you have to leave, so I, you probably won't be able to make it, but I did want to talk very briefly about the uh, interop uh, stuff just for five seconds or so. Okay, so thank you everybody for joining. We'll talk again next week. All right, let's see here. Who added this? That would be me, the new guy.
the new guy. Okay. Who gave you the right to add topics? Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Let's just give people a minute to leave and then we'll start talking about it. I'm, I'm still here for the discovery um, interrupt stuff because I am now committed to writing some code. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully this will be short and then we can switch over back to the, to the interrupt stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And I'm just hanging out if that's okay. Yeah. Anybody can hang out. No, no big deal. All right. Tell you what. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, that was John, right? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead, raise your topic. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to raise um, the existence of the PHP SDK. I know that there hasn't been a lot of traction on there. I did look in the Cloud Events SDK Slack channel and there are really only a few messages um, overall in the history of just searching for PHP. So. Um, at our organization, we're currently utilizing um, Laravel, which is a common PHP framework on top of Lambda uh, and some other AWS services. And we see that, you know, there's, there's a need within our organization for allowing us to use um, a PHP SDK for cloud events, and then to also be able to use that alongside some, some other um, languages and services that we have. So I, I know that, like I said, the new guy raised this topic. Um, but also I'd like to figure out how I can support that. I don't know if there's a, an active maintainer or a point of contact there, but I have set up a, a fork myself and read through some of the governance there. Um, I just want to make sure that if we do get this rolling, um, that I can help set a good foundation for this. Because I, I think that you know, the PHP community would really um, benefit from cloud events. Uh, I, I think they'd really benefit from a lot of the CNCF um, projects. And so any, anything I can do to help bring cloud events on board in that community, I'd really like to help participate in whatever you all think is the, the best means of that. Okay, well, cool. Well, th again, thank you for joining. As you, as you know, there really isn't much there today. So this is wide open and anything you want to throw at it, we're all for. Um, in the past, when someone new came along and said, hey, you guys don't have it for this language, I want to do it, they would immediately become a maintainer because no one else was doing it. So it made perfect sense. I need to go back and double check because we just recently introduced a whole bunch of governance rules about how maintainers are created. And I need to go back and refresh my memory about how we do maintainers for brand new uh, languages. Now, granted, this isn't technically new repo, but for all intents and purposes, it, it is new, right? Um, but chances are, you will be able to make you a maintainer um, and then feel free to do pretty much whatever you want as long as it's headed in the right direction. Um, I would look at the other SDKs to get guidance in terms of how they operate or what they've done in terms of design choices. We do have an SDK uh, readme or a, a MD file at the root of our repo that people would add to occasionally to provide guidance for other SDK authors if you wanna look at that. But otherwise, to be honest, it's kind of a free for all for you right now. We're, we're excited to have you, but we don't have a whole lot of guidance in terms of telling you what to do other than make it so. Okay, sounds good. I know there's a lot of really great examples. Um, I use Go in my day to day, um, and I'm a big, uh, you know, I, I'm a gopher. So uh, I plan to use that. SEK is a good example just because I, I really like the API there. Um, as well as I know that there are those conformance tests that are available. I don't know if those are part of the spec repo or somewhere, but I've got that bookmarked. So I like to go ahead and just use kind of the Go and maybe even the Rust um, SDK as good examples and just try and maintain the, the good work that's already been done in those SDKs as part of the PHP stuff just to bring it along. So, so long as it's a, a good plan, um, I'll start making some progress there and pinging people. Yeah, that sounds great. Anybody else have any comments or recommendations for John as he moves forward? Okay, the only other thing that popped in my head as, as we were talking about this is um, sometimes people have often, when they look at, at situations like this, they try to say, oh, well, we should try to have commonality across the SDKs. And th their definition of commonality will vary, right? Some people say, we wanna make sure we support similar features while other people actually go as far as to say, well, let's make the user experience similar. And that could get kind of tricky, right? Because I, th I think where we've landed, and please other SDK guys speak up because I'm not technically an SDK person, but I think where we've landed is first and foremost, 
the user of an SDK wants the SDK, the, we want the SDK to feel like a natural extension of that particular language, right? So for example, it'd be a mistake to introduce Golang isms into a PHP SDK, unless a PHP user would be would feel perfectly natural with that particular mechanism, right? So commonality across desired features and semantics, but not necessarily commonality in terms of the exact uh, design, because every language may have their own idiosyncrasies. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I'll keep that in mind as part of this. Okay, because we don't want a PHP developer to feel out of place by, you know, think, look at this saying, oh my gosh, this is Go, why is it in PHP, right? So. Yeah, for sure. So we have a few internal devs who are um, pretty much full-time PHP, so I'll also kind of kick the tires around internally um, since we're, we're wanting to use this um, in our as a daily driver. So um, I'll, I'll get feedback from some people internal and of course, you know, look for any feedback from the community on making sure that it's PHP centric. Okay, cool. All right, anybody else have any other comments, questions about that topic or guidance? Okay, any other topics for SDK stuff? All right, in that case, let's switch over to the interrupt thing for a sec. There were basically a couple of objectives that I wanted to, or they that I have and in terms of having this call today, even though it's not scheduled for next week. First is we originally talked about having interop event in November. Obviously that did not happen. <clears throat> and I know everybody was busy and I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers because um, I know everybody, myself included, just got swamped and it just didn't happen for a variety of reasons. Um, however, I do think we need to push ourselves and nag ourselves to make something happen here. Now, I think going through uh, this type of exercise is gonna be a great in terms of trying to flesh out the spec. I think that's all well and good. Um, and I, at the same time though, I do think having some sort of interop, even though I do think it may be a little premature given some of the huge design discussions that we were having today, I do think it would be useful to have at least the start of people coding to help expose even more design gaps, okay? And so what I did was, over the, over the last couple of days is I wrote down very quickly what I would expect a implementation of a discovery endpoint, a um, implementation of a subscription manager to look like or to support from a testing perspective, okay? So for example, if, if you're gonna participate in the interop, your discovery endpoint needs to do this, right? It has to be able to support, you know, up to at least a hundred different um, services in there so we can get pagination testing going, right? But not necessarily all the time. Maybe have a flag that tells you how many you want, right? These are all the various things I thought people should be forced to try to implement as part of their interop coding efforts. And then the, the tester or the client who write, or the person who writes up the client, they need to test various things. So I started just quickly jotting down what I thought they should test. And then I did the same thing for subscription manager, right? So for example, I think we need to have common services so that clients don't have to um, change their code um, when they subscribe for every single endpoint, rather we have common subscriptions or common services available, right? So people can get similar semantics. Um, so these are the kind of things that I thought we need to sort of agree upon as part of an interop thing. And what I wanted to do was to mention this today so you guys could take a look at it and start iterating on this list. That way people have a little bit more concreteness to what they're supposed to be coding. Because I think one of the reasons it was hard for us to make forward progress here was it was a little bit nebulous in terms of what people were coding up, right? All we basically said is here, here's the spec, go code it. And you can do that to some extent, but I think it's easier when you have something very concrete in mind. And that's what I was trying to do was give very concrete scenarios that we expect to be tested in the interop event. And maybe that helped jumpstart some of the development efforts. And, or people just hopefully just need to find the time. Anyway. That was it. I just wanted to bring this up as a nagging reminder for all of us, myself included, to start taking this a little more seriously because we've got to start making some progress here. Okay, any comments? Am I, am I off base? Is this completely insane for me to head down this path? Just looking for feedback here and how we can speed things up here. I think, I think it's good. <laughs> Sorry, I suppose we're saying the same things. Okay. Yes, okay. Giving, giving a direction and uh, uh, something that everybody kind of needs to go and, and uh, implement is useful. We're, okay. we're, um, 
I think since we're since we're working a bit in the abstract, um, necessarily since we're just doing basic plumbing, um, I think this is required. I think ultimately what will help is once we are a little bit further ahead of having some mechanics working is to do um, what we did for cloud events uh, in, in the beginning, like the airport scenario thing, mm -hmm. um, where um, we, can, we can probably go and just take that same um, basic scenario and just, and just make it um, extended with that functionality. I mean, we, we probably don't have to use the same, the same code, but we don't have to go in, introduce a new scenario. I think that was, that was pretty nice. Yeah, no, I, I do. I, I like the idea of extending that one. Um, just in case you guys haven't looked at it or, or if you don't remember, we did actually have very concrete sort of high level scenario in mind. For example, the circular discovery endpoint kind of thing. It just never panned out. And I think it's because it was still a little too abstract. So Clemens, I do like your idea then of to make it more concrete, go back to our airport scenario. And I think in fact, um, the other Doug did ping us over, over vacation. I think wanting to see how we can um, move, move along in that direction as well. Yeah. And, and actually Clemens, as a reminder, check your email. I think he sent, I think I copied you on an email back to him because I wanted to get your take on something. Okay. Uh, when? It was sometime over Christmas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> just sort by D. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. um, but yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm. I'll. I have. I have plans to start coding um, uh, Monday, and then um, have have something. I mean, the, the at this point, the most important thing is that we have multiple people writing code that uh, can then see whether um, uh, you know the spec makes sense. Um, but of course, I'm going to write this kind of with um, uh, some product ideas in, on, on, in the back of my head. But it's going to be a very simple um, C sharp um, like command line app or or web web posted app yep. or Azure Functions or an Azure Function or something like that. Yeah, make makes sense. And just to let you know, there already are some implementations of discovery endpoints out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Um, so I, I, we can add you to the list, or you could, you, if you're writing more of a client kind of a thing, or this, this is for anybody, not just Clemens. These endpoints are out there to play with. Um, I'm not sure how far along they are. I think, for example, Scott's has all local URLs for things, so when you subscribe, it may not necessarily work, stuff like that. But mm -hmm. some of them are different stages, so give it a try. Um, okay. Anyway, that was it. It was, it was more of a nagging thing more than anything else. Um, okay. Cool. Any other questions, comments on the discovery stuff? Okay, before we adjourn, just a question for you guys, going back to the entire discussion that around this stuff. Um, I love today's phone call, right? I, I think diving deep into walking through very concrete examples like this are gonna help expose gaps in our design and our thinking. Um, do you think that the weekly phone call is the appropriate spot to have this discussion or do we need to set up a dedicated like possibly two hours or more dedicated time to have a deep dive virtual whiteboard session because my fear is that the one hour isn't enough and um and we and we need well basically that's it we, we one hour just isn't enough a week to, to make real progress here and we need dedicated time to sit down and hash through this stuff in one gigantic session kind of a thing uh, this is the this is the I think this is the thing where we're really missing the uh, the face to face uh, conference meetings because mm -hmm. that's that's why you would hash that sort sort of stuff out. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I think I think given that um, it's unlikely that we're going to have that this year, <laughs> to be realistic, um, we should go in and, uh, and figure out how we can go and do a virtual face to face with uh, lots of time. Okay, because I was I was thinking about suggesting that during next week's phone call, but I want to make sure that I wasn't the only one thinking that. So, okay. Because, I mean, ultimately, we need to have we need to have some 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 time where we can also, without speaking about particular documents and and wording, etc., 
just someone goes on uh, um, and talks for a little while to to um, explain things without things being rushed. And so we can we should go and have a day where we can have ample time and just work work through those things. Yep. Okay. I will add that to the agenda and see what kind of uh, reaction we get and. Uh... Let's see what happens. We should have a cloud event demo scene party. <laughs> yes. All right. Any other topics anybody want to bring up on anything since we're all here, or some of us are here anyway? I, I have to rush to a meeting that I'm too late for, but I hope good to said I don't have a speaking role in that one, but I have to leave. Okay. Well, thank you, Clemens. Anybody else have anything that they want to bring up? All right, not hearing it, I think we are adjourned. Thank you all for joining. Um, we'll talk to you again next week. Bye-bye. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Cheers.